right, everybody. Welcome back to yet another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time we're going to be introducing advanced cluster management for Kubernetes. Um, it's been a topic that's been requested a couple of times, so I'm really happy to have Brian Tannis and Kamesh Sampath with us um, to walk us through what that actually is and hopefully give us a really great demo, um, as they are wont to do often. Um, so I'm going to let Brian and Kamesh introduce themselves and take it away. We'll have live Q&A at the end. You can ask the question in Twitch or Facebook or um, in Blue Jeans or YouTube Live, wherever you are, um, and we will aggregate those and ask them back to Brian and Kamesh to answer them. So without further ado, I'm going to unmute them all and let them introduce themselves. Brian, Kamesh? Hey, uh, I am Brian Tannis. I'm a developer advocate uh, here at Red Hat. I focus on OpenShift. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about ACM uh, a little bit. Um, and yeah, I guess, Kamesh, do you want to introduce yourself? Then I'll talk a little bit about what ACM is and we'll get into a demo. Okay. Uh, thanks, thanks, Brian. Thanks, everyone. I think probably uh, this is my first uh, OpenShift Commons briefing that I'm handling. So I'm I'm kind of uh, work out of India as a part of Red Hat uh, Developer Advocacy uh, team. Um, I actively evangelize on Kubernetes, OpenShift, serverless, and service mesh technologies. Um, been a Java developer for a lifelong. Uh, maybe this this year, exactly last week, I just crossed my 20 years into the IT industry. So kind of doing development from day one until now. Uh, that's pretty quick introduction about myself. Um, another common thing I usually get is I speak so fast. Uh, but I try to speak slow in case if you, if you see me speaking fast, just stop me there. Probably I just try to speak slow as well. That's pretty much it, Brian. Over to you. Yeah, no, 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 no speed rest. I think we're, I think we're good. I think some of the stuff is, is, is really awesome. Um, you know, how we can manage and spin up and do a lot of stuff with multiple clusters because the world of Kubernetes and OpenShift is getting more and more complex now as you start thinking about it. So there's there's a need to ACM and let's let's figure out what this is. So number one, first point that I do want to make is um, if you aren't familiar, make sure you check out this site. Uh, so this is our main landing page, talks about what ACM is and uh, there's a the ability to go and get the tech preview so that you could try this out yourself. Um, so number one, make sure that you check this out. Um, that way, you know, you could you could try it out. Current status of what advanced cluster management for Kubernetes is, is we're currently in tech preview with this. Um, and you know, you guys could you guys could try it out if you think that it's interesting. So number one. So what is ACM? So why why do you need it? The, the number one thing, or the, there's three main points for advanced cluster management. Why do we need this? One is uh, there are increasing need to have multiple uh, Kubernetes or multiple OpenShift clusters available. Some people might use this for development. Some people might use uh, a cluster for, you know, different, you know, products or, or, or you know, Publications, we want to go and have one particular business unit that might, you know, have specific requirements versus another one. And there are different uh, opinions, you know, even within Red Hat of should I have one large cluster that has all of our things or should we spread this out and have, you know, particular needs met for each cluster for each, you know, group that might be using some of this stuff. So having the ability to, number one, manage the complete life cycle of an OpenShift cluster is one of the main pillars of what advanced cluster management is. We have the ability to spin up clusters. We have the ability to manage their update cycle, check to see if they're, you know, need an update, things like that. We have the ability to connect to existing clusters, right? And we'll showcase some of that stuff in the in the, the demo. On top of all of those things, when you have multiple clusters or you know multiple components out there, right? You have to have a way to be able to manage 
policy, make sure that, you know, we're able to have the governance, the risk assessment, compliance, these things um, within the cluster. We need to make sure that each cluster is meeting those specific requirements is what I mean. Uh, and ACM allows us to do some of that. Uh, and then the third aspect is when you have multiple clusters, you get some benefits there. You know, you can target a deployment to multiple locations to have your own complete hybrid cloud. You could make this on, you know, any cloud provider, on-premise, all these things, right? And there's benefits to that. Um, you know, you have the ability to deploy your application to multiple geographic re regions to be able to have some sort of, you know, DR assessment in place, right? What happens when something doesn't work? You have the ability to, you know, maybe possibly deploy this app in multiple places and you could, you know, manage that um, appropriately. So we'll, we'll showcase, you know, talking about how to deploy some of this stuff there. Uh, Kamesh um, is awesome developer advocate. Here's some details that we have some of this. Um, I have a slide, I'll add it to the deck so whenever we send that out as well. One of the things that Kamesh was mostly or recently interested or working on is the Knative cookbook. So if you're interested in serverless approaches, you don't want to deal with OpenShift YAML or Kubernetes YAML, but you still want to deploy your application on those types of environments, you should be looking at serverless, you should be looking at Knative, um, and the book is free to download. So check out that link if you haven't seen it. So what some of this looks like. So the first pillar of this would be the unified multiple cluster management, right? And like I mentioned, it gives us the ability to create and update and get rid of Kubernetes clusters. And we could tie the advanced cluster management, the main hub, into our own uh, multiple cloud environments. So what I mean by that is we could go and specify an AWS credential, a GCP credential, an Azure credential, um, and you know there, there's you know more to come probably, but currently we do those things um, and. Once you've created the connection to those cloud providers, we could go and spin up in a, a Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster that easily. We could search and find any resource that we have that is running on those particular clusters across our entire domain, which is pretty awesome, right? So whenever you have the complexity of multiple clusters, where did I deploy this thing? Where does it go? We need to make sure that we have the ability to easily find that, and ACM does give us that ability, and that's pretty neat, right? Once you have deployments that are that you know complex across these multiple clusters, you need to be able to find things quickly, and ACM does that for us. Uh, one of the other things is we have the ability to quickly troubleshoot some of the issues across the domain of clusters, right? And we'll see some of that stuff in the demo. Importantly, like I mentioned, policy-based governance risk and compliance is a big part of this, right? We don't want to have to, you know, wait for a security team to, to, you know, tell us, hey, something's wrong or whatnot. We want to be able to get alerted quickly, right? So ACM allows us to essentially set up some of these policies. Uh, for security applications and infrastructure. So we could do that and we could visualize that this cluster or this set of resources is meeting the requirements that we have, right? So number one, right? Uh, and we have the, vi the visibility into this. So we could see some of the, the, the screenshots of, you know, how this kind of looks like um, to be able to validate and make sure that compliance is, is there, right? We want to we want to make sure that these clusters are in compliance when we have m many of them because it is harder to manage. But ACM hopefully takes away some of that complexity and makes it easier with some of that. And finally, the third aspect is really the application and how that's deployed. You know, it, it's nice to have you know some of the infrastructure tools that allow us to manage multiple clusters, spin them up, do that stuff, and make sure the things that are on there are in compliance. 
but really what it comes down to is how do I deploy my app and how do I do it at scale now that I'm able to have multiple clusters? How do I how do I manage all of that stuff appropriately? And ACM helps with some of that too, and we're going to show that in the demo. So you can easily scale some of these deployments um, in a simple, you know, unified view. And you can see we've got uh, an application with many different pieces and components here. Um, you could deploy applications from multiple sources. Um, you know, just like you could do a lot of this stuff with with Kubernetes and OpenShift by default. Uh, we're able to do this on multiple clusters so that we could have a unified vision across some of this stuff. And again, like always, being able to see and understand what's going on is very important, especially when you have the complexity of multiple clusters. So ACM uh, gives us a quick visualization across our clusters so that we could see how the relationship of deployed applications actually goes through the chain. Um, and I know that I've seen a lot of this stuff, uh, a lot of the problems of some of this stuff with, you know, talking about how a service mesh works, right? You know, we want to be able to manage how those things go across, right? ACM gives us some of these views, gives us the ability to see some of that stuff. So anyways. With that, let me pass it over to Kamesh and we'll get going with the uh, with the demo so you can see how some of this stuff actually looks in real life. So before before I jump into the jump demo, like I just want to share a few links and then he, he probably the problem which Brian was saying earlier to see why we need this stuff, like why we need ACM. So right now I'm just going to show you multiple different console, at least for my case, I just have three clusters right now running. Uh, one, if you see this one, this is this is the one which is running on GCP, uh, which I spinned up uh, in the morning. And then I have one more cluster which is running on Azure. I think I just spinned up some time back. And then I have a third cluster, so which I run on uh, AWS. I think I have three clusters totally. In fact, now adding to ACM, which is going to be four clusters. Uh, just imagine this is a small demo, which I'm going to do for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but if you imagine the scenario, so we have Three, we need three clusters to show this demo and multiple other stuff, right? So this will be a typical scenario when you start deploying your application enterprise, right? Your clusters keeps growing, and as you keep your clusters keep growing, so you also have the problem of having multiple tabs, multiple things open up, multiple management things, and becomes it kind of becomes a nightmare once upon a time, right? We have to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters. So that's that's the real reason what Brian was saying earlier. Like we got this ACM to basically manage your multiple Kubernetes clusters from one single place. So when I get into ACM, I can start to see my clusters across, I can import my clusters, we'll see one example, and we can also spin clusters uh, on the fly from ACM itself, okay? Uh, just before going there, so what I want to show you is that you can find these demos. I put the demo links on the chat, but still I'm sharing this once more. So what I'm, what are the demos I'm going to show you today? So these are available right here on this GitHub repository. Uh, that's the demo ACM manifest. It's going to deploy a very simple application. Uh, I'll share the application as well. So this is application GitHub URL, where you can go look at the application as well. And these are the two things which is going to show you today. So nothing big about this application. So only thing is that we're going to deploy the same application as multiple clouds. But what basically is going to do is that we're going to use ACM to do this deployment. And end of the day, on the verge of deployment, ACM is also going to take care that to tag this particular adding an environment variable to each of these deployments saying that it belongs to AWS or GCP or Azure. Okay, that's the three clouds which you're going to see today. So if you are interested in getting started with uh, open cluster management, deploying to your own cluster, so this is the GitHub repository, uh, which you can go there for uh, ACM, github.com open cluster management. And once you are there, so you should see this uh, little one, uh, this deploy folder that gets you deploy your application from scratch. If you are interested in the leading edge builds of open cluster management, you can do it from here. It gives you all instructions, basically how to get started with ACM on your local cluster, right? OpenShift cluster, which you have. In case if you're interested to go pretty quick away, you can also do it from the operators uh, consoles. If you go to the operator hub, uh, I'm just showing one example where I've installed this. You can just say ACM uh, advanced, uh, let me, type this one, uh, AD, uh, okay, if you see this one, 
There is an advanced cluster management operator, which is also available. You can just click install from here to get it installed on your cluster as well. So, but I did, I did that earlier. So this is another way by which you can install. Uh, and then it goes to our tech preview repositories to pull your stuff. The earlier one which I showed you is, is more like your bleeding edge builds. So many chances that they can break, but this one is a little bit quite stable as a tech preview one, which you can also use there, right? But so this is, how we can get... mm -hmm. this is, yeah, like installing on any OpenShift cluster that's, you know, updated and you could get ACM on your own OpenShift cluster to be able to get this management right by just installing this operator and then following the how to install instruction, right? Exactly, exactly. So uh, cool. all, all it requires is like, so once you install this operator, right? Basically, let me show if I get this one on my install operators. Let me go to my, so this is namespace specific. This is not a global uh, installing. So you have to choose a namespace where you want to install because it's not global by default. So I just have that install on advanced cluster management namespace. So these are the two operators that get installed. Once you get it installed, uh, you see a bunch of API that's available. One very first thing that you need required for this to work is that you need to go and click on this multi-cluster hub. So that's going to show you uh, the multi-cluster hub operator. You can just click create and then create one. For example, if you create this, this is going to give you, this is a pretty much as needed. So you need to specify a Quay secret for now. So which is which you can log into Quay and then register yourself to get a secret. So which allows you to pull this one. Uh, so you can use the secret to pull the uh, operators. I mean, the images that is required end of the day. So this is the only thing that is required for you to create. Uh, don't mind about this pending, it's already installed, but there is a fix that's going on to have this show a proper status. Um, so this is what is required for you to get started with the uh, thing. And once it's done, um, you will see that on the namespace, approximately you will have, uh, not approximately, precisely you'll have 35 pods running. So this is a way like by which you can verify that, okay, I have my uh, ACM up and running for me. So this is one way to do, see this. Another way is that you once you do this, when you go to the, the routes side of things on the networking stuff, so you should see the, uh, the multi-cloud console, which should be there. You can click on this console link, which should basically get you to this place, what you see right now. So um, that's pretty very quick intro, like how you get started with installing uh, uh, ACM on your clusters. Uh, so with that, what we do is like, let's let go and see what other things you can do, right? So, so once you click on this uh, red thing here, you'll see that a bunch of things. You'll have an observe environment, topology, and all these things. If you go to overview, uh, these are something which we bought from the cluster that you already have. So one thing which you showed right now from uh, Brian was showing sometime earlier, so this is going to give you an overview. So I have, I have one cluster on Azure and one cluster on Amazon already imported. And there are two clusters. You will also import one more GCP cluster in a second. Just to show how you can import the clusters. You can also go and add a provider connection so that you can create the stuff as well. Okay, so this is the overview page. Uh, to manage the clusters, you have to go to your uh, manage clusters uh, here. If you click to this, you'll get to the clusters what I have installed. If you see this, I have a couple of clusters. One, this AWS one is what I created just before this particular session because approximately it takes 20 to 30 minutes for this cluster to be created on the fly. So I thought like we could do it earlier so that you can, I can know like how to do this. So one of the things is that you can just do add cluster, which basically clicks create cluster. So this should take you to this particular screen where I can take, okay, what's the cluster name I need to use? What's the domain name I can give? All the typical OpenShift installation parameters, right? And then choose one of those cloud providers, right? For example, when I choose Google here, it'll ask you a bunch of other stuff, right? A few other parameters that you typically do when you create stuff, okay? So, so with the this, with the stuff, first part um, in the, the base domain and all of that stuff, so in each respective AWS, GCP, Azure, we still would have to go and manually set up the, the DNS like domain or the DNS zone in those areas and you know, fill that out appropriately, right? This isn't handling right. that. That's this correct. doesn't do that. Yeah. I think we need to have those, we need to have those one, thanks Brian for getting that up. So we need to have those base domains and other stuff created, including if you go to the official OpenShift docs, uh, you should see that what are the basic things that you need to have on each of those clouds to have these things set up. So those basic cool. things are prerequisites I call as are required before you come here, right? This basically creates a cluster once you have all those basic setup done. So, uh, so we be wondering like, so coming back to this one, uh, as, as earlier, like you have, assuming that you have the 
base domain and everything set up. So you come here, you can choose uh, the possibly the possible open chip uh, installation that you can do 4.3, 4.18, 4.4, 4 etc. And then once you go here, so you just see the connection, right? So you'll be wondering what this connection is basically. So the connection is basically is a set of things that you also use with the OpenShift installer to kind of create a cluster, right? Let me go and explain this further. So if you go to the provider connections tab, you can add a connection basically. So this says, okay, I'll go and add a connection. And then let me go and choose Google here. So this says, what should be your provider? Right now we have only the three public cloud providers, Google, Amazon, and Azure for now on ACM. And then it can give you a custom name and then it is going to create a secret basically. So which you want to store in any of the namespace, right? Probably you can have, I have something like my GCP, for example, which is already created here. So that my, all my thing related to Google Cloud gets into this particular namespace, right? Any config maps or secrets or whatever it have, all right? And apart from that, so it also asks you for a few other information like what should be the project, the Google project, GCP project that you need to use. And then you will get a JSON, basically the service icon JSON that you need to put here. And if you go to try.openshift.com, then you should get the full secret as well. So that you need the full secret to pull the images and possibly the SSH keys, which you need to have so that you can, in case if you want to SSH into those machines, you can using those keys as well. So these are the some parameters which is asked for. Once you give this, you can use the same parameter can be reused whenever you're spinning a new clusters. Right. So if so anybody is familiar, if anybody's familiar with the OpenShift dash install command on how to install OpenShift on any of these cloud providers, this is the exact same set of inputs that you have to give for each specific cloud, right? With AWS, you're going to have to give a access ID and a secret, right? So that stuff still needs to be provided, but you've just provided in here and then you could use this to easily spin up stuff, right? Exactly. And another thing I need, I like to say here is that the point to mention is these are again, are all uh, custom resources that gets created behind the scene. So in case if you're an organization where you have the CI CD in place, uh, then you can completely do a git, git ops from this, even sp spinning up your own clusters could be git ops as well. Okay, that's also possible, but that's too advanced for this particular session. Maybe we can see it in a future session where we can do a complete git ops using pipelines and other stuff to get your folks fund up from this as well. Okay, that's, that's so, a different thing. I'm just saying that, sorry. ACM sorry. exposes an API that we could tie into. I mean, I'm not saying that we're doing it now, but it does, that's cool. Yeah, I think that's that. I think everything is CID here. So everything that gets created here, everything is a CID that we can create and then push it into a GitHub repository and then use them as part of a GitHub flow, right? So, so this is how I added these two things, probably uh, demo AC, I mean, AWS, demo GCP, these are from Amazon and Azure Cloud. So once you have this, uh, this is not only that you have to create a new cluster, I can also pull in my existing cluster into this particular stuff. Uh, for example, so I have created one cluster, as I said earlier, using this connection, and this Azure cluster, I did an import uh, end of the day, and then now let's do an import again on the fly. Uh, let's say I want to import another cluster. Uh, let's give me the cluster name as uh, I give back in GCP. Um, and then I also use another namespace where you want that to be created. And once you click generate command, that's going to give you a, a complete secret, right? The kind of big uh, encoded secret plus command, etc. I'm just going to copy this up and then let me go to my command line. And then uh, this is my GCP cluster you see on my screen, um, where I'm right now on GCP uh, CLI. I'm just going to do this uh, open shift command and copy paste this one, this big ML for you, and then say yes. And then this is going to create me a bunch of stuff on my GCP cluster. Um, and then it's going to import my uh, cluster into my thing, right? You see this, there's a custom resource definition getting created, multi-cloud, and then it creates a bunch of other objects uh, on the fly. And then you service role, extensions, and every stuff. And now if I go back to my console, if you go to my clusters list, I should see something like this. My backend GCP is pending import because there are something has to be deployed in the particular cluster. Let's give some time for it. Then it also adds a bunch of other labels here. So you'll also have these labels imported as well. So in this way, what you can do is like you can create or you can import your existing OpenShift clusters. Two questions. So does this only work with OpenShift or can we tie this to a other Kubernetes distribution? 
Uh, as of today, uh, this works only with uh, vanilla Kubernetes as of from this console or whatever I've shown because once you click on add cluster for that matter, so let's say, let's do it again. You see that I don't get anything right here, but uh, soon you should have a vanilla Kubernetes also coming up here, right? So I think I've seen people like on the, on the, on the ACM list and other places where you can have, I've seen people who are also importing their local vanilla cube clusters, right? Like a mini cube or a kind clusters kind of stuff into this. They are doing experimenting with those things as well, which means that it also gives you an option that you can get uh, Red Hat, I mean, vanilla equipment is also inside, but right now it's only open shift. So it can okay, do only open cool. shift right now. And, and to clarify that a little bit further, someone asked, uh, can you use this with 3.11? 3, 3 and I think this is a 4.0 and up. Uh, I, yes, that's true. I think as of now, like, I don't think so. It's supported in uh, four. I, I mean, three, it's only supported in four. So. And one more. Um, so we get them all in while we've broken your train of thought. Uh, it, can we use it on OpenShift dedicated? I think we can use. I think we can use uh, OpenShift bare metal as well. But in this demo, I'm showing it on cloud because that's the easiest one to demo. Uh, if you watch our summit demo, uh, probably I will place the link at the end of the session. So we actually imported a bare metal cluster inside ACM. And then we also spun up application on the bare metal cluster as well. That's also possible. Okay, and there was another question. I'm just gonna ask all the questions in the chat right now. Yeah, um, sure, please go ahead. I think it takes some time for this to import. We can take questions yeah, now. Yeah, that's what, that's what I figured. So um, it looks like it needs a Quay secret. Um, is Quay um, included um, as part of ACM? Uh, no, I think you can use your Quay account, any any generic Quay account. I use my own account right here, and then you can just create a secret there, on there from there, and then from the Quay account you can create a secret from there. Let me show that uh, to you uh, how this is done. This is my Quay account. I'm just going to get into my Quay account. If you go to your account settings right here, so it's a, it's again a free thing. You can just go and create your own account here. Uh, so if you go here, and then you can just do this generate encrypted software. Uh, once you do this particular stuff, what happens like it gives you multiple options like your Docker login command, your Kubernetes secret, there's multiple other things that get showed for you. I just need to pull out your secret down and then follow the instructions that's there in the op op deployment for you. Right? Um, either this and then if you're using an operator, you don't need, you know, and then you can just use, use, use to create the secret inside, inside your uh, namespace and then specify that in a way, right? So what I was meaning is that once you create a thing, let me go back to the install operators, to advanced cluster management, you need to create this CID. So once you create this CID, so it asks you for this image pool secret name. So what you can do is like, once you go, once you are in Quay and got your secret downloaded, it's an YAML that gets downloaded. It you can just do a kubectl create to create the YAML secret on the namespace where you want to deploy ACM. Once you have done that, then specify that secret name here so that the image is pulled cool for you. Okay. All right. And, and then, then it's, it's, yeah. And then there, uh, uh, Manesh is asking um, who managed the credentials and billing from AWS, GCE, or Azure? Is there a component? So this one those are, uses this. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Those, are, those would be your credentials for your AWS account. So depending on how, you know, your workplace or however you have that set up you're just using the credentials for your own account. This is not, um, you know, built or managed or whatever by Red Hat. You, you just add that provider con connection with the particular, you know, access ease to be able to get into those cloud providers. So that it's completely managed on your own account. Okay. And from Twitch, um, and Manesh says, thank you for that answer, Brian. That did it. Perfect. Um, from Twitch, we have a question. If the installation fails, like not enough CPUs or RAM, can you resume a started installation later once you got the quotas for the instance, or does it? Uh, yeah, I think uh, it does not resume uh, as of today. So one of the good thing about when you create a cluster from via ACM is that in case if it fails, I had that issues multiple times during this COVID situation is that I will not have enough instances of GCP in India clusters. So whenever I spin these apps, so I usually get a failure because the instances are not available. So what ACM does it like it rolls back this particular stuff. You know, you say like it roll back completely. Like it's like your database transaction comment, right? Either it's completely done or it's rolled back completely. So there's no point of resumptions anywhere. I think you have to adjust your quota back and then 
trigger again the create cluster thing. That has to be done. And um, someone on YouTube, Dolth, is asking, is ACM supported on completely disconnected environments? Not possible. Um, uh, I think that's a good question. I don't have the answer for that right now. Maybe I can check and get back. I don't think yeah. so for now. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm because thinking I talk, it might work as long as they could talk to each other. Like there's probably a dependency that those things need to communicate with each other and with this main hub that we're looking on, but, and Quay, right? There is a dependency on Quay right now, right? So anyways, yeah, I guess, who knows? <laughs> I, I, maybe I'm wrong thinking. Maybe, should, like, there maybe not now. Uh, I, should, I should answer for, to be on a safer side, maybe not now. Maybe yeah. we could have that soon, right? As, as we do for OpenShift, like for a disconnected install, we should have it soon later as well. So see, it's one of the things you can think this way, right? Since it's, it's going to import data metal, uh, I can have ACM deployed within your intranet as well. It just needs an OpenShift cluster to deploy. Uh, but since we are in a tech review mode, we have all the images right there in our query repository. So either you import them locally and point it to something, do some act behind the scenes, but not on the outside, right? Maybe like you can still do, but lots of uh, hacking required. And that's how I have I one it. more question. So this ACM, you installed the operator. This is what you're showing right now screen. That's a that's an OpenShift cluster as well. Is this this not in the list of things that you're showing on your screen right now, right? This is just no, like a management cluster? Exactly. Okay. That's that's your management cluster. I, I can still deploy I can still deploy application to the local cluster. Uh, but since it's a management cluster, I keep them out of the applications because uh, I don't see if something wrong happens, I'm easy to go and change this particular stuff, right? Can import into any of the new ACM. If I'm going to deploy applications, then that's going to create a dependency on this cluster again, so which I don't want at technically end of the day, right? Cool. So just to show that, like, we see this, this node, the Google node has also been imported right now, which means my Google cluster. So let me go and show you something here. So if you see here, so this is an Azure cluster I'm on right now. Let me go on to the uh, thing, the backend GCP. If you remember, this is a project we specified when importing the cluster. So when you click on this, there's a little bit more details I'm getting in. So you'll see a bunch of pods and deployments getting created and all applications gets deployed here. So whenever you try to say where you want to deploy the applications, right? So let me go and find this out. Project backend GCP. So it takes some time for it to get the cluster imported here. So let me see if that is there in Azure. I see a bunch of parts. Maybe they have changed it now. So it says that that's how it connects your, your parent cluster, management cluster and application. Maybe I'll try to find it out and post it back. So you can find a bunch of parts getting created running there, which kinds of communicate to the back end. All right. So let's, uh, without further waste of time, I think we're running uh, 20 minutes more. I think I'll just quickly show you to deploy an application or two things. As I told you earlier, so all the scripts are available in the GitHub repository in the public one, so you can just use that one. So what I'm going to do right now is, is going to deploy uh, a bunch of applications. Um, I think I'm going to deploy that on the, I mean, the management cluster, but it's going to spread out into multiple clusters. Let's take an example. I want to deploy on Azure and AWS for that example, right? So, uh, so what it basically, one of the good things is like at the end of the day, it's going to show you like this. Uh, it's going to be a simple hello world kind of a demo. But uh, the topology end of the day, it's going to look like this, right? I have a backend AWS, I have a backend Azure, and I have a frontend application end of the day. So, but it's going to distribute the application. How that happens? So let me go to the code. So again, it's it's related a bunch of CRDs again, right? Uh, I think I'm overflowing with CRDs right now. So, for example, so the basic three basic things that is required to get started with this. It's basically a namespace uh, where you want to deploy this application. This namespace is going to be created in all the clusters where we are going to deploy the application. So every every cluster, for example, let's say AWS, Azure, and Google, everything is going to have this particular thing created for them. All right. And then there's a channel which we need to say. So what basically a channel is, right? So it's going to adopt a, a GitHub methodology behind the scenes, which means that I need to go pick up stuff from GitHub and then use those YAMLs, which will be your customization or Kubernetes manifest or any kind of manifest that you have. It's going to pick them up from GitHub. Um, I think that's the easiest channel I have. There are multiple other channels. I don't remember them top of my head. If you go to the uh, the open cluster management repo, 
we have listed all the other possible channels which you have but for the for the demo sake we'll be using github i can go to github and then use this github uh, developer demos repository which is which has the application inside that so and then it says that okay this is what i'm going to use as my channel for my github so what i mean to say right now when i'm going to deploy my application i'm going to define few things like your channel your applications a grouping of this particular stuff and all of the stuff it's going to go and use this channel to download those manifests and apply those manifests in respective uh, what you call your clouds right so uh, when you go, go do this the application is basically is nothing but it says okay it's a group uh, kind of imagine like a logical group of all the deployed applications you can group this application together i call this as hybrid cloud that's going to be the demo which i'm showing right now and then i can specify a bunch of components we'll call, i'll show you these component kinds as well in a second so this is going to be a subscription uh, model that's going to be which all the uh, components are going to have the subscription done so what i'm going to say this go on deploy these only in, in all the uh, I mean your clusters which has this particular label as cloud and then the cloud is going to say either Amazon Azure or Google okay this kind of selector typical selector thing which happens within Kubernetes for the services it's going to go to do the same thing here for example if you go here onto our console you see this uh, AWS has a cloud Amazon this has also has a cloud Azure and this also has a cloud Google, right? I have, I've not deployed two other things in this. So just to show you that when I apply these rules, it's going to go only to AWS and Azure and not to Google, right? Still I have Google, I can bring in Google as well. So this is going to be a label, which is going to be used here. So that's what this says. Okay, go and select these things, apply the subscriptions only on those clusters, which has this particular key, a label with any of these values, right? I think there are other expressions also as possible, but this easiest one there okay so this is the first three, three things which we need to create i need to create a namespace i need to create a channel and i need to create an application all right so let's go do this uh, i'm just going to follow the instruction from the uh, demo uh, just to follow this one right here so i'm just going to say copy this one uh, let me go and see that i am right now um, okay let's go see here uh cd uh, uh, GitHub. I'll go to my repository here on my local. Which context, uh, I guess, or which cluster are you applying this to? You apply this on the management cluster or on going, one of the ones be, that are? Yeah. That's a super question, uh, Brian. I think if you see here, I'm on my management cluster right now. Cool. So that's where I'm going. I'm going to do this application right here. So this is going to be applied on management cluster. Uh, that's what I need to do. Uh, it could be it not necessarily that it has to be in specific project, but it could be anywhere you want, right? So I'm just going to go here and then say uh, copy this. Where is, where is my thing here? Oh, see apply. So let me go to hybrid demo uh, thing. I think I have a bunch of things. The same thing what I'm showing on my VS Code. I'm just saying that create this uh, apply, create the namespace, create the GitHub channel, and create the application. That's what I'm going to say. It's not going to basically do anything right now because I don't have subscriptions yet to be created, right? My subscription has to be created. This is going to create these ones here. So all these ones, if you go to the console, and if I go to the uh, manage applications, you should see this thing, application thing starting up right now, but it will not have any clusters imported you see this hybrid cloud application which we saw just now created but it's not managed in any cluster as of now right this is an empty topology right now because i have not created other other things that's required right so what is other thing is required so you said that okay i need i need to be on the cloud i need an application but how do i select which are all the things where i need to place which are the clusters that i need to place okay so those are the two other crds that is required for example so let's go and say uh, I have I use customize here. So if you see here, what I'm going to do is like so. It's going to have a subscription. Basically, if you remember, let me put this one in parallel uh, here, so that I can explain these two things in parallel. So let's take what is there in the application. In application, if you remember, I said that I need the subscription here, right? The component kinds, which is going to be used here, is a subscription. That's exactly what is here. And then what subscription basically tells you is that, okay, so it goes and tells, go and find out all the things just labels, cloud all, because it's a basic one. I'm just going to say that GitHub path is front end and ACM. Where this front end ACM is, right? 
you'll be wondering where this is like this is going to go to my github repository that is from my channel so which is here and for my channel i'm going to say okay go and pick this stuff up from this particular repository which is going to have here right from this go to this channel and then which path i'm going to say i can just even say the github branch which i want to say here go and pull this from github branch okay so let me go and show that to you as well in a second this is going to be hybrid cloud uh, this uh, this application you're going to deploy and then i'm on a branch acm here that's exactly what i say there right in my application subscription so that's what i say here and then i define a placement tool okay, where you want to place this on okay this is an example of a front end so i say go and do the front end let's open a back end cluster here so that's a more thing which you're going to deploy right now so in the placement tool, I say, this is going to go into all the environment. That's going to be having an environment called as dev, the label. And then it's going to say like a tier backend okay? in any cloud for that matter, right? It's going to get you a bunch of clusters right now, an like array of clusters, all right? And then it's all only go and deploy only on cluster which are ready, right? If it's not ready, then it's not going to deploy the stuff for you, all right? So this is, these are the two things that's required. I say a subscription. Uh, which says that it ties your placement rules and your subscription goes into your application, right? The application says that it uses your particular subscription to deploy your application. All right. So uh, I'll take a quick pause here uh, to see if you have a question. Otherwise, I can take the questions once I do a first deployment. I'll trigger a first deployment and we'll start taking the questions as well. So how do I deploy this? Let's. Let, I'm going back to my thing. I'll go to the backend here. So deploying a backend. So let me go to my CLI and then I say CD backend. All right. Uh, I hope I have customization install OC apply. I just say OC apply here and then say AWS, right? It's going to do an AWS application. I hope this works. All right. So let's wait for some time for this to be created. So I'm on a. Okay. Uh, what happened to this? Backend subscription failed to find an object. Open cluster management view. Boom, boom. And subscription says hybrid demo backend subscription. I think I missed something here. Uh, I created these three things: hybrid demo. Uh, okay. The project. Uh, what was the project I created? Hybrid demo. Uh, let me go and find this out from here. Yeah, get up, hybrid demo. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, let me go here. I think I would have missed something. Okay, there are too many things to do here, so probably uh, OC get subscriptions. Uh, let me try the command again. OC apply. Customize. Okay, so it's not able to find the patch. You have to apply the the first thing that you ran inside this namespace. Or no, that should already be created, right? Yeah, I think uh, why I think it's missing the. I think it's a more to do with the customize command. I think right here. So if you see this. Uh, Okay, let me try a different one. That's here. Okay, the same one, right? So, apply app start open cluster management subscription. I don't know what's going on here. So, yeah, let's see what's in. Yeah, I think I created the application. I created this one, and I create this. Pretty much, I have to do namespace, channel, and application. Once I do this, I just need to go and do this uh, overlays, right? Customize thing. Let me see if I miss. If I need to have a group, because I'm on a new machine, so probably I'm not sure I did install customize. Let me quickly install that as well to see if that helps me to come here, right? 
that's that's what happens when you get into new machine. Probably uh, <laughs> while this happens, I can probably take uh, new questions right because I had a lot of problems with this machine shifted back and forth, and then finally I bought my new machine, and then maybe I would have missed this one. Uh, that should that should be the case. I think I'm done right now. Let me see if I can do it on Azure. Uh, Okay. okay, let's see. Somebody mentioned application subscription and subscription CR name doesn't match. Mm. Okay, let's go here. So the application, uh, let me go here. You get to love it when they, um, when the YouTube channel feeds you uh, hints about your live demo. Yeah. <laughs> so I think yeah, I think this is this is a typical developer demo. Like it doesn't work anything on the first time. So, so let's see. Like, uh, so what was that uh, thing? Like, let me see. There's an application, and it says app start open cluster management. That's going to be the group, and open cluster management is pretty much here there as well. And then this is going to be the one here, right? So, uh, this is good here. So. I can overlays. I think I have that right. Uh, apps, cluster management thing, and here also it's uh, apps cluster management view for the placement and the subscription also on apps cluster management dot io. So it says about different thing, right? Fail to apply the patch. Uh, I fail to apply or find an object with apps open cluster management io v1 subscription. And let me go here. Overlays, AWS. Yeah. Uh, that should be your subscription YAML that's in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty much the same. It's exactly the same except that the backend path changes. So that's all it requires for another day. So we had a question in the chat that I see missing the part on uh, multi-cluster setup earlier. Was there a demo showing how to set up that authorization setup? Um, how do you initialize the cluster for everybody? Um, so yeah, number one, you have a OpenShift cluster that is your main configuration cluster that you install the uh, advanced cluster management for Kubernetes operator on, deploy a CR uh, just as stated in the install um, details there. And then uh, when you're applying that CR to be able to get ACM installed, you need to make sure you have a Quay secret. So you're gonna have to go and do that um, to, to provide some of the, the pool, uh, pool secrets so that you could get those images. Number one, once you do that, you then could use ACM to attach to either AWS, GCP, or Azure, um, at least right now, uh, and you could create a cluster using ACM. What we did was we already had a cluster provided and we generated a command to basically um, add this into our ACM. Uh, so you just go specify some details there and you add some of that stuff. Uh, just copy and paste that into, you know, your uh, OC command or kubectl command. And you'll hmm. be able to get that. I think I don't think so. I think it's giving me a different error now. Probably the apps uh, failed to apply a patch. Hmm. Anyways. So I think uh, I might be missing something. I'm not sure what's there or the the one got updated right now. I think I'm not sure. We are at the top of the hour. Maybe uh, the instructions are here. Probably if I find something, I'll, I'll update the instructions right here. Uh, so if you have the clusters, or I'll do a recording of this again and then post it back with uh, to DM so that you can post it out. Uh, and but if you if end of the day, like it's what it basically does. It like it goes finds this out and goes to this one and then find starts applying these overlays, which is here, right? AWS or GCP, anything. So it's smart enough to find if there's a customization file at the root of those repositories in GitHub, we'll pick those files and start applying those files uh, on the respective clusters uh, where you get this application up and running as well. So I'm sorry about that. Like the, the demo didn't, didn't work for some reason. 
I'm still trying to figure out a uh, thing. Maybe my new machine, I would have missed something uh, to install or something. Maybe uh, I'll try to find it out and then post it on the, on the, on the, on the GitHub repository so that you can find out the reason why it didn't work as well. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, that's, so well, that just gives us an excuse to invite you back again. Um, <laughs> but, and, and maybe um, if you run the demo again when it's working um, and record it, we can um, put it in the link <clears throat> with this um, talk as well. So you know maybe we can we can do it that way. But I also would love to have you back, Kamesh, to talk about Knative sure. um, and to really um, dive deep into that again sometime soon. So I. I think we've managed to answer everybody's questions um, that came in from all the different chat areas. Um, and I'm just gonna look quickly here again. Brian, if you have any um, final words or a final slide on how to get a hold of you, you wanna throw that up, um, you're welcome to, or I can just add that resources link at the end of the video um, if you haven't got anything prepped. So I'm fine with that too. And there were a lot of links that they shared with us here in the chat, so I'm going to try and, and grab all of those um, and include those in the um, in the uh, the YouTube edited version of this. Yeah, so there you go. That's I think great. this is probably the best takeaway slide. Um, you know, if you are interested in trying uh, advanced cluster management for Kubernetes, feel free to try it out. Hit this link, uh, and you'll be able to get the tech preview. Um, but we basically showed some of the beginning steps of how you get this going, right? You got to create that, that um, create that or install that operator on your cluster, the management cluster, uh, and then tie it to existing um, clusters that you have, or uh, create the connection for the main AWS, GCP, or Azure cloud providers tie that stuff together. You need to have credentials for those clouds to be able to tie that in and get some of the automation where you could spin up a cluster via ACM. Um, but you know, once you provide that stuff, you'll be able to spin clusters up using ACM and they are you know, connected and you could get some of this stuff. Uh, We'll make sure that we get a demo so you guys can see this, uh, you know, at least applications and things, you know, on multi-clusters like that. Um, but yeah, main takeaway is try it out here. And uh, yeah, if you have any feedback or questions or whatnot, I know we had the question about disconnected installs. Um, you know, we'll make sure that we, we take that back to the EM team of this and see, you know, I'm sure that's on their list of things, but you know, if we get more people asking about certain stuff, they could prioritize appropriately. But anyways, there's, um, there's, there's a lot of things to cover. There's one last set of questions um, Dolph is asking coming in from YouTube, and if you have time, um, I'll read them out. And you can, can you integrate your own automation to run pre or post uh, ACM deployment, like Ansible, both for clusters, application deployments, um, preferably running automations from he keeps saying ASM, it's a, I think he means ACM, and not calling ACM API outside of the automation platform. Is that a future talk, or is that something you can answer in a few minutes? So I think probably that, that requires more explanation in the end, probably we can, I think we could potentially put it as a future talk because uh, I'm not sure about Ansible, but definitely we can, uh, I was trying something with pipelines, uh, Tekton pipelines with this so that you are, cluster gets pinned up automatically using the same principle about what we apply right now, but it runs instead of you running the commands, it will be run by your pipeline. So you can trigger a pipeline to deploy a GCP cluster, an Azure cluster, or AWS cluster, or any kind of stuff. Um, that I had principally working, but still not complete. Uh, maybe uh, we could have another talk on that, like once I have that up and running as well. Okay, that, that would be great. And, and there has been in the chat a running thread, um, and I just want to follow up, and Ryan Jarvin and, and I, and I've been hearing this too as well, about um, using ACM for, um, without Kubernetes, for just managing um, CoreOS and using Ignition. So I think there is something there with the IoT edge kind of use case for ACM. Um, we were just in the OKD working group the other day, we were having a conversation about, you know, OKD is about to come out in GA um, and running on Fedora CoreOS. 
and it, is there a way we can do this for the edge use case? Um, and so I think there's another topic there that we'll try and tease out as well. Um, and because there's a lot of folks and on, if people are interested in that on July 13th, I believe, um, and the same time slot, we're going to have the Fedora CoreOS community leads, um, Dusty Mabe, um, Brian, uh, Ben Briard, um, Colin Walters, and two of the OKD um, engineering leads, uh, Christian Glombeck and Radim, Vadim Rutkowski, are all going to be chatting about Fedora CoreOS, Fedora um, for IoT, and um, we'll touch a little bit on um, using OKD um, as well with that. So. There's, there's a lot here, um, and Kamesh, uh, really, again, I'm, I'm going to make you talk about Knative, because um, I think you could do it rocket, and um, I'd love to, I'll have to get the book now and read it, because I didn't realize it was out there, so um, great news. And I will take all of the, um, the links here, and we'll post this um, video up shortly. So, Brian and Kamesh, thank you. Kamesh, I have no idea what time it is in your your world right now um is it eight hours later than now no, it's now it's it's half past 10 now okay then i yeah. yeah so go back and go to sleep um and um thank you because we've probably got you wired and thinking about things now so but um pause the demo and we'll talk to you all again very very soon so thank you again brian and for everybody with your great questions out there so